Welcome back to the Pen and Ink Well, thanks ever so much for joining us again today. Right, this is really quite something quite special that um, I've been equally excited and terrified and um, just amazed by a the fact that somebody has so generously loaned me this pen to have a look at and b the craftsmanship and quality of a pen like this and then finally the fact that I had to well I had the opportunity to write with this pen and well as you can probably guess by now this is no ordinary pen this is no cheap pen um, this is at the pricier end of fountain pens I mean don't get me wrong I have seen pricier fountain pens and there are some that I would absolutely love to have a look at one day however this is one that is certainly among the dearest pens there was a another pen that I looked at that was expensive but this is definitely among the most expensive pen that I've written with and had the pleasure of working with and what's so wonderful is that this is a British manufacturer this is fairly sort of local in the Midlands and this is something that's this I sort of feel is a part of history okay you know what I'm talking about because obviously it's all down below in the title so it's not as if I'm coming to this big reveal of what pen I'm looking at I'm looking at the Yard of Lead Viceroy Grand Victorian fountain pen. This is a solid silver fountain pen. So this is class and beauty all rolled into one. Completely different from anything else I've ever worked with as far as I don't use metal bodied pens very often. I love beautiful looking resins and acrylics and I love the patterns. But then when you're given the opportunity to have a look at a pen like this and when it's from created in a factory that's just about, I don't know, probably about a hundred and so miles away from here, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things, about an hour and a half's drive, really, I couldn't say no. So I am so very, very grateful to the people at Yard of Lead for sending me this to review. Um, I can't thank you enough. And again, thank you to my colleagues, to Scribble and to Ian at Pens, Paper and Pencils and um, to Rob, who also had a look at the pencil version of this, part of my colleagues at the United Inkdom, who, by the way, for information, we've done a meta review of this so that you can see all of our opinions. And we've, I think we've all tried different nib options on them. They've looked at, some of us have looked at pencils. So as you know, I love fine nibs. Well, I love very fine nibs. So the finest nib that they had on this was a fine. So I was very happy. Gosh, I use the word so a lot. I was very happy to be sent a fine nib to have a look at, and you know, as a point of comparison from there. I will stop talking and stop the introduction fairly soon, but just, this is the box beautiful beautiful box and when I had this package come through in a it was so well packaged so that and I can completely understand why and when you have a look at this sort of closer up now in a second you will see just the detail that has gone into just packaging it so well and you know and giving it the grandeur that it deserves I know I say that I'm always impartial um, I am yet to find a pen that I really dislike. So if you look back at my video and say, well, she doesn't really dislike much. I've, I'm yet to find a pen that I hate. There are some things that I like about all pens. There are some things I really don't, I really dislike about some pens. And it's not that I really dislike any. They just don't necessarily suit me or my style of writing or my tastes. Which is why I won't always agree with everybody else's opinions on this pen. Actually, I think with this pen, I think I probably will agree with most people's opinions on this pen. I am not paid. I am not given anything to post a good review. And I just want you to know that, particularly when I am probably likely to um, use an awful lot of superlatives when I'm talking about this pen very shortly. This isn't about me wanting to sort of just say how great it is because somebody's telling me to or somebody's asking me to. In fact, people ask us to give our honest opinions because 
they need to know what it is and how they can improve everything. So here we go, I'm going to stop talking. This is, as I said, the Yardo Lead Grand Viceroy Grand Victorian fountain pen in sterling silver. I'm going to turn the camera around, we're going to look at it in a lot more detail. It really need, you really need to see the detail and I'll give you some further detail as to the work that goes into this. See you all very, very shortly. Bye. Welcome back and thanks for joining me again to have a look at this Yardo Lead. So it comes in this beautiful black box. Understated, simple black box with Yardo Lead printed on the top here and England. So let's open this up and we'll get to what's really inside. This stunning black wooden type box which has got the wood grain on the top here. Nothing else on here but just says high quality. And this beautiful intricate clasp here. Look how beautiful that is. Really something special. So let's have a look inside. So we open it up and this is how this arrived to me. I've well, I've done a very poor attempt at sort of wrapping it back up. So black inside, cushioned, this silk-like feel on the top with yard of lead printed in silver here. And then we have this velvet cushioned padding here and the pen is wrapped inside this. I just want to show what else comes with this before we look at the pen then in detail. So this tray comes out and under here then we have a solid silver polishing cloth which you would need and you'll see why in a second handcrafted in England really nice touch instructions on how to use that cloth that came with it and then the guarantee and user's guide for this pen so let's just put all of this back in here carefully and then we'll unwrap this. Look at that. Right, let's get this box out of the way so we can concentrate on this. An absolutely beautiful pen. It's an absolute stunner. Um, this is the Yardo Lead Viceroy Grand Victorian fountain pen. So let's have a look at you know where we are as far as this concerns. So if we just look at the finial at the top, just a highly polished plain end. Look at that, you can see into the camera from there as to how polished that is. The other end exactly the same. And then can you see that clip? It's such a beautiful, funky, sort of retro style, but so retro, retro. it is Victorian age. It's, look at the angle on that. And it has yard of lead printed down the side of that. So we have these three engraved circles at the top here. And there's a plain plate here where you could have something engraved, whether it would be your name, if you were given this as a gift, you could have something engraved in there. And then you'll see here the hallmarks to prove that this is solid silver, the 925 hallmark. Absolutely lovely. Um, if we go down, we'll see it's say and more hallmarks here. We've got how close can we get for you to pick these up? There we are. So we've got the YOL, which is the Yard of Lead. I cannot profess to know what all of these mean. Again, we have the 925 silver there. There is a lion there. There is an anchor there. And there's an R there. So all those hallmarks basically mean that this is genuine silver. Again, going down the tip then, we have these three circles that match those at the cap. And then we have this wonderful pattern on here. Look at that. And that is all hand finished. This engraving. It's just a very, very classic, historic, 
pattern that just fits in with this pen. It's not feminine, it's not masculine, it works both ways. So let me give you some details. I actually haven't measured, I have measured it, sorry. Um, this, right, let's put this down because it is heavy. This is a heavy pen. There is no getting away from the fact that this is a heavy pen. This is, as far as the sort of weight of this pen is concerned, this is 67 grams, as you see it here, with the cap on. And without the cap, it's still 47 grams in weight. Anything that's approaching 47 grams, you know, in an entirety, I would class as being a heavy pen. But 67 grams, it is a heavy pen. It's a big, heavy pen. But you'd expect it. You would have to expect it because this is a sterling silver pen. Silver is heavy. It's going to be heavy. If you're looking for a lightweight pen, this is not it. It is a heavy pen. But if you're the sort of person, you're not buying this for the same sort of reasons that you would buy a lightweight pen. This is something special. This, I would say, is a gift. It is one of those pens that you buy yourself because it's your grail pen. It's something that you've wanted for quite some time. It's something that you want within your collection or you want to hand down through the family. You're not buying this pen and picking this pen up to jot a couple of notes. That's not what this is about. For, you know, for me, this has not left the house since I've had it. A, it's not mine, it's got to go back, so I'm not going to take those risks. It, in fact, hasn't left the box other than when I've been writing with it, it goes back into the box because I don't want to mark it, I don't want to tarnish the silver, I want it to stay looking beautiful. Um, so how expensive is this pen? This, I've seen varying prices from it, you know, really varying from around about the four, 550 mark up to around the 650 mark. It differs depending on where you're looking for this pen. I'm going to go and look at it, you know, inside now, but just give you some measurements then. This is 148 millimetres long. So it is a long pen. It's a big pen and that's capped like this. Uncapped, it's 138 millimetres and it can be posted, but that's going to make a very big pen again. So let's have a look. Let me get this back out of the way again. The cap clips off and let's... I'll just show you this pen posted. It does post very neatly. But there is no way I could write with that for any length of time, really, because that is a heavy pen. It's well balanced, even with the cap on here. It is a well balanced pen, considering that there is 20 grams of additional weight at the back of this pen with the cap posted. But I would, I, I don't post pens anyway, unless they're designed to be posted. So I would not post that pen. Take that cap out of the way. Whilst it is a long pen, it's not ridiculously long. It is the most well-balanced pen I have come across, considering the weight that is in this pen. A lot of thought has gone into the sort of distribution of that and it is comfortable to hold. So let's have a look at this section. We've got a very highly polished grip section here and this is where this cloth comes in because we naturally have oils on our hands we sweat there's all those sort of things and if you're writing with this pen after a while I haven't had any issues with slipping because I haven't written for a huge amount of time but if you were going to write for any considerable time period then you're naturally going to sweat and your fingers are naturally going to start slipping on that. And that's where you're going to need to start polishing this pen to make sure that this silver stays in really good condition. And I mean, even looking now, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a, there is printing. There we are. It says 925 sterling right here by the nib section, right at the top of this grip section here. But let's just look at the detail that goes into this. Absolutely beautiful. This is a cartridge converter pen. 
there is a rubber o-ring at the top here I wouldn't suggest trying to use this as an eyedropper it is you'll see in there it is solid metal through there solid silver in there and ink being freely in there is going through in it it is a cartridge converter um, okay I suppose let's sort of talk about the elephant in the room there are some that would say that as you get to a certain price point with pens that you would expect a filling system that maybe is a little more sophisticated a little different however this wouldn't work with a piston filler mechanism and I don't dislike cartridge curve inverter filling um, systems I like them they are functional they do what they say on the tin and it works whether that cartridge whether the converter could be a little more elaborate possibly because of the price points that we're talking of here potentially maybe you know if the end was made of metal might make that bit difference but you don't see it it is very much hidden away within this pen and it is just what is feeding the ink through this pen so then what you've got on here now is an 18 karat gold nib it's not white gold it is an 18 karat gold and then it is plated then with sort of like a nickel then to make it match the color of this silver it is not a silver nib it is a gold nib and look how pretty that is this is a fine nib colleagues of mine have tested the medium nib and I believe the broad nibs but this is a fine nib it is always my preference to have a finer nib and it is a very very smooth nib it is a standard Western fine nib I would say it's um not it's not as fine as a Japanese you know, nib fine nib would be and it is extremely smooth to write with among the smoothest pens that I've ever written with I have to say let me put that back there so we can see it one last time in all its glory and beauty um, how does it write? I'm going to do a writing sample now very very shortly um, it writes very well and I'll give you some more sort of um, details on that as we see it now um, I mean what I can say really is left to say with this before we do a writing sample is that it, you, know, you can tell the amount of love and the amount of effort that has gone into producing a pen like this the detail, the fine detail in this pattern is just sheer beauty absolute sheer beauty would I buy it? absolutely if I had the money would I use it on a day to day basis? no and that's just me I don't have that sort of um, that finance stream to be able to justify using a pen of this cost on a day-to-day -day basis if somebody bought this for me I would be extremely grateful and it is a pen that I would keep in the family and I would pass down it is a pen that I would use to mark documents with maybe to sign if you were getting married or and you were signing the register it's that sort of pen it's that sort of momentous sort of thing um, if I was retiring in what's well, probably more likely to be 40 years time in this climate a gift like this as a retirement gift would be beautiful a gift like this for any sort of thing would be beautiful a christening gift for a new baby you know it is one of those heirlooms to have in the family but it's functional it's not one of those things that you keep but you just can't use so let's have a look and let's do a writing sample so we can see that and get a little closer right I've given this a good test in I haven't just sort of you know written with it once to see how it feels I have given it a good test and I've tried a couple of different inks in it as well if you have a look over on my Instagram page at Inkwell Pens you will see that I posted a picture of it recently using with it filled with diamine soft mint the beautiful sort of color really complemented this silver well but what I wanted to do as well was to try a couple of other inks in it so now you'll see so this is the you 
yard of lead. Viceroy. Grand Victorian. And this is a fine nib. 18 carat. The ink, if anybody's interested, is Pelican Edelstein. Amethyst. I thought I'd try something quite regal with it. And I thought maybe a sort of amethyst type sort of garnet coloured ruby red ink would really sort of um, make it, you know, give it that sort of regal feel. And considering actually I've spent a fair bit of the day watching various, well, the last weekend, it's very difficult over here in the UK to escape the fact that it is our Queen's 90th birthday celebrations at the moment. So, um, yes, it is feeling quite regal here at the moment. Right, so how does this write? It's a smooth writer, a beautifully buttery smooth writer, as you would expect from a pen of this magnitude and from a nib that is 18 karat gold. It gives you a little feedback, but please, when you hear the word feedback, that doesn't mean scratchy. It is not scratchy at all. You just know you're writing. And I that is my preference. That is always my preference, is I like to be able to feel the nib on the paper. Whilst buttery smooth is wonderful, sometimes if you don't sort of have that feeling and it's just gliding across that paper, for me, I have I feel like I haven't got control of it as well. So it's been lovely. Every now and then, I have had some skipping with it, particularly on the downstroke when I'm first starting, if it's been sort of idle for a while. Um, there is a little line variation available, but I'm not going to push that too much. It's too nice to sort of push that nib. Okay, I don't think there is anything else that I can say to this. It is truly a work of art and it is a pleasure to write with. I could not write with it for long. I managed probably about two sides of A5 paper before it became, before my hand started aching, it became um, a little uncomfortable. But I don't think this is designed to you for you to sit down and write lengthy amounts. But then that's me. Somebody with bigger hands, maybe with stronger hands, wouldn't have an issue. If you get an opportunity to try this pen, to put it in your hand, it is available in a lot here in the UK in a few um, brick and mortar stores. You know, some stores, I know there's one in Cardiff that has them here, and I'm actually going to Birmingham next weekend, so um, I'll be sort of looking around. But if you get the chance to try this out and have the opportunity to put a pen like this in your hand and write with it, please do take that opportunity. You will not regret it. Um, nothing else to say other than thank you very much again for watching thank you very much for listening please subscribe to the channel leave a comment below and i will see you all again very very soon got lots of exciting videos coming up and happy summer everybody bye